Hi, my name is Richard, and I'm a data science evangelist here at Coiled. In this video, I'll show you how to use Coiled and Streamlit to create intuitive, interactive web applications that can process large amounts of data without skipping a beat. Coiled and Streamlit work great together. Streamlit handles the front-end layout and interactivity of your web app, while Coiled sorts out the back-end infrastructure for demanding computations. It's a match made in heaven. We'll start by running a basic Coiled and Streamlit example to get our feet wet. From there, I'll show you how to really get the most out of Dask and Coiled by running a heavier workload. Finally, we'll tweak our Streamlit interface to allow the user to scale the cluster up and down using a simple slider, and we'll include a button to shut down the cluster. All the material you'll need to code along is available at this link. You'll also need a Coiled account, which you can set up easily via cloud.coiled.io. Some basic familiarity with Dask and Streamlit is helpful, but not a must. For more information on both of these topics, do check out the rest of our docs. All right, let's get started. We'll start with a basic example script to just get the juices flowing. This script uses Coiled and Streamlit to read more than 146 million records, that's more than 10 gigabytes of data, from the New York City taxi dataset, and visualizes locations of taxi pickups and drop-offs. We start by importing the necessary libraries, in this case, Coiled, Dask, Streamlit, and Folium. Folium is a great open source library for creating interactive geospatial maps. In the next section, we create the front end user interface with Streamlit, some descriptive headers and text, as well as two drop down boxes to allow the user to select the kind of data they want to visualize. Next, we write a function that will spin up a coiled cluster. This is where we specify the number of workers, the name of the cluster so we can reuse it later, and the software environment that will be distributed to our scheduler and workers. Next, we load in the data from the public Amazon S3 bucket as a Dask data frame, specifying the columns we want to include and the block size of each partition. Note the call to df.persist here. This persists the data frame on the cluster so that it doesn't need to be reloaded every time the app refreshes. Finally, we use the input of the streamlit widgets above to create a subset of the data called map data and pass that to the folium map, specifying that we want it displayed as a heat map rendering. Note that this is a standalone Python script that you can run from your terminal using streamlit, run, and then the path to the file, and so not from a Jupyter notebook. We'll go ahead and run that in our terminal. And in a matter of seconds, our browser presents us with this beautiful interactive interface. This is pretty amazing, considering the fact that multiple gigabytes of data are being processed in the background here. We can select the type of information to see, uh, slide this over to select the number of passengers, and see the results displayed on the Folium map. Great. Next, let's show some Dask muscle. If you happen to click the URL to the Dask dashboard, you would have seen that the computations to generate the map were completed in just a few tasks. Well, Dask is actually made for distributed computing and really shows its teeth when there's a waterfall of tasks for it to run through. So let's give it a chance to shine, shall we? We'll create a new section in the script that allows the user to set up a group by computation. We'll give the user the option to choose which column to group by and which type of summary statistic to calculate and we'll include a button to trigger the computation. Now let's go ahead and rerun that Python script. And there we go. We've got some new dropdown options, a fancy new button, which when we click it, triggers some heavy computation on our coiled cluster, calculating a summary statistic over 146 million rows of data in approximately 45 seconds. Fantastic. That was pretty gratifying to watch. But if we're being picky, it was a little overkill to use that entire cluster to generate the maps, which consisted of only a few tasks. And on the other side of the spectrum, maybe you're presenting this app to your CEO right before an important board meeting. And the last thing you want to do is have them stare at a turning wheel while the computation runs for 45 seconds. If only there was a way to scale our cluster up or down depending on our computation needs. Well, with a simple call to the coiled command cluster.scale, we can specify the number of workers that our cluster has. Couple that with an interactive streamlet slider, and that means we can create a super intuitive interface to adjust the size of our cluster right here in our web app. 
Note that while downscaling is instant, scaling a cluster up takes a minute or two. The good thing is that you can continue running your computation while the cluster scales. And you can always check the number of workers in the coiled cloud web interface. Excellent. Finally, let's build in a button that allows the user to shut down the cluster to avoid unnecessary costs. Note that there's a trade-off here. If you're doing quick iterations of the Streamlit app, we recommend keeping the cluster running so that you don't have to wait for it to spin up every time you rerun the script. If you're all done for the foreseeable future, however, it's good practice to shut the cluster down. And I'll just sneak in a pro tip here. Coiled clusters by default shut down after 20 minutes of inactivity. You can tweak this by using the idle timeout keyword argument to set your own preferred timeout window. Great, let's recap. We started out by running a basic coiled and streamlit example script to visualize some New York City taxi data. We saw how quickly we were able to create an intuitive, interactive web app that could process 146 million rows of data without skipping a beat. Next, we took this a little further and gave the users the ability to calculate an even heavier computation on our coiled cluster. We then supercharged that computation by building in an option to scale the cluster up or down as needed. Finally, we discussed when and how to shut down your cluster to avoid unnecessary costs. We hope this video helps you create the impact you're striving for in your data science workflows. If you have any questions or suggestions for future material that would be helpful, please do reach out to us on our community Slack channel or by sending us an email at support at coiled.io. Thanks for watching.